Welcome to another video. We have a limit problem here that doesn't give us everything that we need. In short, we have a problem where we already know what the limit is. We just don't know what makes up the function that we are taking the limit of. So that means you have to understand the nitty gritties of computing the limits of a function. So we have the limit as x goes to infinity of this rational function minus two terms, a linear term and a constant. Now this is divided by x plus one. And because it's infinity, we can't plug it in. So your mind should tell you, you must do some algebraic manipulation. You should have a single rational expression before you try to take the limit. Any other thing you try to do might get you stuck. I don't know other ways. The only way I know always works. Let's get into the video. So like I said, the only way I know to take a limit as x goes to infinity is to have a single rational function. So what I'm going to try to do is put all of these together into one single um, expression. So I'm going to say that this is the same thing as the limit as x goes to infinity x squared plus x plus 1 over x plus 1. Now I'm going to write this as minus, I'll put this in parenthesis, so it's going to be ax plus b, like that, over 1. Let me just write it this way, and I say that this limit is equal to 4. So we can write this as the limit as x goes to infinity of, if I multiply this by this, I'm going to get x squared plus x plus 1. If I multiply this by this, I'm going to get minus x plus 1 times ax plus b all over. I multiply this by this, I get x plus 1. And this now gives me 4 as the limit. Mm. So now I, all I need to do is distribute this. So what I have now is this limit as x goes to infinity. Now on top here, I'm going to have x squared plus x plus 1. And now I start distributing. Now this is going to be x times ax is going to be ax squared, but there's a negative. So it's going to be negative ax squared. Nice. Then I have x times b is going to be bx with a negative minus bx. Okay, I go to 1. 1 times ax is ax, but there's a negative, negative ax. And then I have 1 times b is b with a negative, minus b. Okay, all of this divided by x plus 1. And this limit is equal to 4. Nice. Remember, we're looking for a and b. Now, because I know when I take limits with respect to, uh, as x goes to infinity, I like to create rational, I mean, create fractions, something divided by the highest power in the denominator. So what I can do right now is, maybe I should collect like terms first. This is the limit as x goes to infinity. Now, every term that has x squared, I'm going to put together this has x squared, this has x squared. So I can say x squared minus a x squared, which is going to be 1 minus a x squared. 1 minus a x squared. I factored it. Nice. Let's go to the terms with x. This has x, this has x, this has x. So there's 1 here, minus b, minus a. So I can say plus 1 minus a minus b. I'm just switching them. x. 1 minus b. Oh, it's just 1 minus b. Plus 1 minus b. Nice. All over x plus 1. 
and this limit still gives us 4. Okay, now when you're taking limit and x is going to infinity, remember the strategy, look at the denominator and divide every term by the highest power of x that you have. And here is just x, x to the 1 is the highest. So I'm going to divide everything by x and see what happens. So this is going to be the limit as x goes to infinity. Here, if I divide this by x, I'm going to get 1 minus a x. If I divide this by x, I'm just going to get plus 1 minus a minus b. And if I divide this by x, I'm going to get just 1 minus 1 minus b over x. And in the denominator, I'm going to divide this by x. I get 1 plus 1 over x. And this is still supposed to be equal to 4. So what's going on? Now, when I take the limit, just see what happens. It is guaranteed that anything that has x in the denominator will go to 0. So this will become 0. And this will become 0. Constant over infinity will be 0. This is 0. So what really we have left are this and this. And if you add this to this, you should get 4. And that is if this is finite. We know this is a constant, so the limit doesn't change. Nothing affects it. But we cannot have x here because this is going to go to infinity, right? So the only way we have a finite limit is if this is not here. And the only way this is not here is if this is 0. So this must be 0 for us to have a finite limit. So, for the limit to converge, 1 minus a must be equal to 0. Otherwise, this limit will not converge. This is 0, this is 0, this is constant, but this is infinity. We don't want infinity because what we want is 4, so this must be 0. And that's the key to it. And this implies that a is equal to 1. So from all the analysis I've done, this is not here. This is 0. The only part that remains is 1 minus a minus b. And when you take the limit of a constant, it doesn't matter where x is going, your limit is that constant. So we can clearly say, therefore, 1 minus a minus b is equal to 4. But we know that a is 1, which implies 1 minus 1 minus b is equal to 4. 0 minus b equals 4. And what do we have? So we have a b is negative 4. Therefore, a equals 1, b equals negative 4. And these are the two constants involved in this. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.